now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. J. Robert Oppenheimer was a brilliant physicist born in New York City in 1904. He attended Harvard University and later the University of Cambridge, where he studied under renowned physicist Ernest Rutherford. Oppenheimer's work as a professor at Berkeley brought him to the attention of the U.S. government, which recruited him to work on the Manhattan Project during World War II. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. These words were spoken by J. Robert Oppenheimer, who played a key role in the development of the atomic bomb during World War II. But what do the words really mean? Why did Oppenheimer say them? And what is their significance? The Manhattan Project was a top-secret research and development project during World War II that aimed to create the first atomic bomb. It involved more than 130,000 people and cost nearly $2 billion, equivalent to over $23 billion today. Oppenheimer was a key figure in the project, serving as the director of the Los Alamos Laboratory where the bombs were designed and built. He oversaw a team of scientists and engineers who worked tirelessly to develop the technology needed to harness the power of the atom. Two days before the Trinity test, Oppenheimer expressed his hopes and fears in a quotation from Bartry's Satikatria. In battle, in the forest, at the precipice in the mountains, on the dark great sea, in the midst of javelins and arrows, in sleep, in confusion, in the depths of shame, the good deeds a man has done before defend him. On July 16, 1945, in the desolate New Mexico desert, the world changed forever. The Trinity test was the first successful detonation of an atomic bomb, marking a turning point in human history. The explosion was so powerful that it could be seen from over 100 miles away, and the heat generated by the blast was intense enough to melt sand into glass. The Trinity test represented the culmination of years of research and development by some of the brightest minds in science. It was a moment of both triumph and terror, as the full destructive potential of atomic weapons was finally revealed. Oppenheimer's reaction to the success of the Trinity test was complex and emotional. On one hand, he felt a sense of pride and accomplishment for having successfully created the first atomic bomb. On the other hand, he was deeply troubled by the destructive power of the bomb and the implications of its use in warfare. In his own words, Oppenheimer described feeling like he had blood on his hands and that he had become death, the destroyer of worlds. This statement reflects the weight of the responsibility that Oppenheimer felt for his role in the development of the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer's quote, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, is one of the most haunting statements in human history. It was uttered by Oppenheimer upon witnessing the first successful atomic bomb test, known as the Trinity Test. This quote is a chilling reminder of the destructive power of nuclear weapons and the responsibility that comes with their development. Oppenheimer's words serve as a warning to future generations about the dangers of unchecked scientific progress. The Bhagavad Gita is a Hindu scripture that dates back to the 2nd century BCE. It is part of the epic poem, Mahabharata, and is considered one of the most important texts in Hinduism. The Gita is a dialogue between Prince Arjuna and Lord Krishna, where Lord Krishna teaches Arjuna about the nature of reality and the human soul. Oppenheimer was familiar with the Bhagavad Gita and its teachings. In fact, he had read it in the original Sanskrit. The quote, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds is a reference to a verse in the Gita where Lord Krishna says, I am become death, the shatterer of worlds. Oppenheimer saw himself as a modern-day Arjuna, who had been given the power to destroy the world with the atomic bomb.
Oppenheimer's quote has been interpreted in various ways. Some see it as a warning against the destructive power of science and technology, while others view it as a commentary on the human condition and the inevitability of death. Still, others believe that Oppenheimer was expressing remorse for his role in creating the atomic bomb. Regardless of how one interprets the quote, it is clear that it speaks to the profound impact of the Manhattan Project on Oppenheimer and the world at large. It serves as a reminder of the awesome responsibility that comes with scientific discovery and technological advancement. Oppenheimer's quote, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, has been a source of controversy throughout history. Some argue that it was taken out of context and does not accurately reflect Oppenheimer's beliefs. Others believe that it reveals a darker side to his character and shows that he had a cavalier attitude towards the destructive power of the atomic bomb. The controversy surrounding Oppenheimer's quote had a significant impact on his career. He was accused of being a security risk and his security clearance was revoked. This led to his resignation from the Atomic Energy Commission and effectively ended his career in government service. Oppenheimer's legacy is a complex one, shaped by his contributions to the development of the atomic bomb and his subsequent opposition to its use. His quote, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, has come to symbolize the devastating power of nuclear weapons and the moral dilemmas they pose. While some view Oppenheimer as a hero for his scientific achievements, others criticize him for his role in creating such destructive weapons, Despite the controversy surrounding Oppenheimer's legacy, his work has had a lasting impact on science and society. The development of the atomic bomb sparked a global arms race and raised important ethical questions about the use of technology for military purposes. Today, Oppenheimer's quote serves as a reminder of the dangers of unchecked technological advancement and the need for responsible innovation. The development and use of atomic bombs during World War II raises complex ethical considerations that continue to be debated today. On one hand, the bombs brought a swift end to the war and saved countless lives that would have been lost in a prolonged conflict. On the other hand, the devastation caused by the bombs and the long-term effects of radiation on the survivors and their descendants cannot be ignored. Furthermore, the decision to drop the bombs on civilian populations in Hiroshima and Nagasaki has been criticized as an unnecessary show of force and a violation of international law. The fact that the bombs were developed in secret and without the knowledge or consent of the American public also raises questions about government transparency and accountability. One of the key lessons we can learn from Oppenheimer's quote and the Manhattan Project is the importance of considering the long-term consequences of our actions. While the development of atomic bombs may have seemed like a necessary measure at the time, the devastating effects they had on Hiroshima and Nagasaki cannot be ignored. As we continue to face complex global challenges, it is crucial that we take a holistic approach to decision-making and consider the potential impacts on future generations. Another lesson we can draw from Oppenheimer's quote is the need for ethical responsibility in scientific research and development. The power of science and technology should not be taken lightly, and it is up to us as individuals and as a society to ensure that our advancements are used for the greater good. This requires a commitment to transparency, accountability, and ongoing dialogue between scientists, policymakers, and the public. Oppenheimer's infamous quote serves as a reminder of the immense power and responsibility that comes with scientific discovery. The Manhattan Project was a turning point in human history, and its legacy continues to shape our world today. 
we must remember the lessons learned from this event and apply them to current issues, such as the ethical considerations surrounding emerging technologies. Furthermore, Oppenheimer's complex legacy highlights the importance of considering the broader implications of scientific research and development. As we move forward, we must strive to balance progress with responsibility, ensuring that our actions are guided by ethical and moral principles. The research for this presentation was conducted using a variety of sources, including academic articles, books, and primary source documents. Some notable references include Richard Rhodes' The Making of the Atomic Bomb, which provides a comprehensive history of the Manhattan Project, and J. Robert Oppenheimer's own writings and speeches. Other important sources include government reports, such as the Smith Report, which detailed the development of the atomic bomb, and contemporary news articles from the time period. By drawing on a range of materials, we aim to provide a well-rounded and thoroughly researched presentation on this complex and multifaceted topic.